we thank you thank you because we are the victorious ones friends I have one guarantee no one who hears these words and pays this price now will become a failure in this life I know it it's not a prophecy it's the truth hallelujah for this is a price we are paying the bible says there remained a rest unto God's people there remained a rest if it um, Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 10 it said there remained a rest there remained a rest and verse 12 I believe says that let us therefore labor there is a rest that is a gift come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and I will give you rest that's a gift but there is another rest that is a reward it's not a gift it said there remain at a rest the word labor in the Greek is constrain yourself to death to enter that rest and verse 11 says that he that has entered his rest oh verse 11 okay verse 10 sorry now that's the for he that is entered into his rest he also has ceased from his own works there is a sabbath the bible says on the seventh day god rested many of us are pressing to enter our seventh day you may not understand some of us are in day two others are in day four others are in day five hear me friends now is not the time to give up because a time will come when men say there is a casting down you will be functioning from that rest you are paying the price now praying in the spirit he said there remain at a rest there remain at a rest this rest is a reward you press that's why we are praying many of you are coming all the way from Kaduna many of you are coming all the way from Gaskian very far many of you are to trek here there's no money in your pocket but you are pressing there is a pressing it's a pressing by faith laboring in the place of the world you may not look like it laboring in the place of prayer in spite of the challenges a day will come and the spirit of God is supervising your press soon he will tell you you are in day 5 and then he will tell you you are in day 6 the last round press hear me there remained a rest there remained a rest and the bible tells us that anyone that enters that rest ceases from his work oh I choose to press no matter what it will cost me this suit will not rob me no the organization here will if I will kneel down and lie down to press I will press if I will fast to press I will press if I will labor in the world to press if I will keep myself from evil to press I will press one day the door will be opened let me tell you when you enter you have entered We live in a generation where people do not understand their partnership with the Holy Spirit for victory. So you can see it in the world, but then you will not press. Paul speaking said, God desired this rest even for the Israelites. But because of unbelief, they couldn't enter this rest. He said, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as he did, as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. They hardened their hearts. And he swore in his wrath, saying, they shall not enter my rest. He said, but like them, today we are hearing the word. He said, they heard the word just like we did. But they, the word did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. So friends, don't think you are doing anybody a favor by coming for koinonia. Every time the devil tells you, why are you just a church folks always with God? Tell him I'm pressing. There is a press in the spirit. I may not eat food now. I will take the gari praying in tongues and keep pressing. For I know a day will come. I will not bow to Baal. I will not compromise God's standard. Remember our teaching on the kingdom. Satan will tell you bow and I will give you the keys. God will say hold on. Endure. He that endures to the end shall receive a crown. There is a crown that he gives those who press. And that's what we are here to do. Hallelujah. God bless you, be seated.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's let's continue our series. We've been teaching on the kingdom for those of you who are just coming today, catching up. We've been having a series on the kingdom. Hallelujah. Trying to understand the concept of the kingdom life. Hallelujah. Because we realize that from scripture, God did not give us a religion. God did not give us tradition. Hallelujah. He gave us a kingdom. The summary of the Bible is that a king, hallelujah, an eternal king who reigns, produced a colony of his kingdom. Remember the concept of the colony? Hallelujah. A subset of the mother kingdom. And he brought us to a point where we will rule and reign and sent us a representative of the kingdom. The one who connects us with the reality of the mother kingdom. We call him the governor of that kingdom. He's the one we call the Holy Spirit. And he's vested with the responsibility of teaching us, empowering us, training us, making us to be citizens of that kingdom experientially. Hallelujah. And helping us understand the constitution, the modus operandi, the values of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And last week we spoke about the fact that or the week before last that Jesus didn't come primarily to take us to heaven. Hallelujah. For we were designed to rule and reign in this earth realm. Jesus primarily came to restore us to the life of the kingdom to grant unto us the keys of the kingdom that were collected from Adam. Hallelujah. And then to connect us to the governor of that kingdom who will continue an extension of his ministry in our lives. Hallelujah. Then a day will come we will be translated for, from this realm so that the enemies of the kingdom will be judged. And after that judgment we will return with our king and we will reign in partnership. Hallelujah. Revelations ends with the beginning of a new dispensation where the citizens of the kingdom rule and reign with their king. Hallelujah. And I did teach us that the apex of citizenship is loyalty. Hallelujah. There is no true citizen of any kingdom who does not pay total allegiance and loyalty. In a democracy, everyone lives for himself or herself. Hallelujah. But in a kingdom system, every citizen lives for the king. And if at any point you were caught doing anything antagonistic to or trying to antagonize the values of the kingdom, you were termed what? A rebel. And so to help us understand that God didn't give us a religion. He gave us a life. He gave us a kingdom. When Jesus walked upon the earth, all his parables were linked to the kingdom. The kingdom is like unto this. The kingdom of God is like unto this. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. Hallelujah. And he gave us the keys to the kingdom. Access to rule and to reign. Hallelujah. And last week we considered Excuse me. Hallelujah. Last week we considered the fact that we need to advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. That we are on earth primarily to what? Advance the kingdom. You are not on earth just to go to school, get married, give birth to children, be the first person to build a nice house in your village or to buy a good jeep, grow old, write a book or two about yourself and die. No, there's more. Hallelujah. We are on earth to advance the kingdom. To extend the rulership, the influence, hallelujah, of the king. And then we spoke about the ways that we advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. How many of us remember? I taught us about four ways to advance or the methods according to God's word. That we advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. We spoke about the place of influence. That we need to have kingdom influence. We spoke about the place of prosperity. According to Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a. Hallelujah. How that the cities of God. 
will be spread through prosperity. We spoke about, um, what did we speak about again? Character. Hallelujah. How that we need to be men and women of character. We are sick and tired of a generation of anointed people who do not have character. Hallelujah. And then we mentioned six areas where the church has allowed Satan to capture and many believers are falling victims. We spoke about the family life. How many of us remember that the family is a vital place where the influence of the kingdom needs to be reached? Hallelujah. We spoke about the business world. We spoke about the media. We spoke about arts, uh, sports. Hallelujah. I'm sure some of you will be happy we spoke about sports. Hallelujah. Because there are some people who say, God, I will not leave sports. Just anoint me to walk there. Hallelujah. And today, very quickly, I want to talk about the lifestyle of the kingdom. Very briefly, I really want us to pray. The lifestyle of the kingdom. Having understood how to advance the kingdom, we must know how to live as citizens of this kingdom. How many of you are seeing your life changed by this series? Let me see your hands. Because if you really are not getting changed, then we are not making any progress. Hallelujah. That our lives be changed. So that when they pick you at random and say, my sister, what do you understand about Christianity and the kingdom life? You don't just say, I'm a Christian and uh, are you born again? The person who says you're going to hell and that's all. That you can let people know that God gave us a kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 10. While I was walking at home this afternoon, I had a vision and um, I saw different ladders, different kinds of ladders. They were painted in different colors and I saw us climbing these ladders. Others were helping others climb. Others were going up but they would come down deliberately. To help others climb and there was such activity and i was watching and i saw some people who were not climbing they were standing to supervise and ensure that others were climbing and then at a point when they were satisfied they would not climb like the other people they would just look up and find themselves up i believe in the spirit these were generals and I believe that this is what God is doing. I believe God was encouraging me with this vision to let us know that we are making progress. There, was, there were many um, activities around. People were climbing. Others were trying to fall. Others. One thing I saw that happen is that so many people were holding others and taking them again. I think that was the greatest, the most comforting part of that vision. Others would go far and then would want to fall and then somebody even those below would hold them and push them i saw this and that was all and god didn't tell me anything about it but i knew by the spirit that god was describing what was happening not just in koinonia but in the church of god universal that god is helping us let me tell you friends we are rising are you listening to me we may be moving at different paces but you are making progress don't let Satan look at you and say, are you really making progress? Don't compare yourself with anyone. We are making progress. When Noah built the ark, the animals entered at different paces, but they all entered. The cheetah entered and the snail entered. That's why we are patient to teach the word until the least person among us becomes as great as David. Hallelujah. Verse 38 of Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 
it says now the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith the lifestyle of the kingdom hear me is the lifestyle of faith are you listening to me the lifestyle of the kingdom is the lifestyle of faith that we come to a point where although we cannot see the king with our optical eyes although we cannot see the governor with our optical eyes we are absolutely convinced about their operation and we can partner with them hallelujah one of the biggest um, challenge for kingdom people is that we always want to see to believe how many of you know that saying seeing is believing say if I don't see it I cannot believe it now the lifestyle of the kingdom is such that the word of God becomes our eyes in the kingdom hallelujah the bible says the eye is the light of the body and then it also tells us that the entrance of this word gives light that means there is a possibility for the word to become your eyes in the kingdom hallelujah what do you need the eyes for in the physical realm you need the eyes to see and in that seeing you get direction hallelujah many of us need the eyes to be certain and to be convicted hallelujah as a kingdom citizen you must get to a point where the word of God becomes your eyes the bible says why we look not at the things that are seen but so we can see things that are unseen he said but things that are unseen he said for the things that are seen are temporal the word temporal means subject to change but the things that are unseen are eternal hallelujah so when you become a citizen of the kingdom one of the things that the governor the holy spirit does is he helps you understand that the life of the kingdom is the life of faith absolute trust hear me absolute 100 percent trust in the word of god the integrity of his person hallelujah that you get to a point where you are totally governed by god's word you cease to walk by your sensory perceptions hallelujah because the strength of the flesh is your senses hallelujah and for many people we are happy only when good things happen around us hallelujah you are encouraged that there is a god only when your optical eyes can see something nice when you hear a good report you see we we have been trained in a world where our convictions come primarily from the interaction of our senses with this realm are you following me now and so when your parents get promoted you are happy and then you sing you say god you are good you are good you are good but when you begin to walk with the holy ghost he begins to train you and he trains you by causing you to lose confidence in your senses he brings you to a point where you no longer trust your senses to give you the convictions hallelujah he makes his word more superior to your sensory perception and brings you to a point where you can hold on to his word that his word becomes your reality are you following me now And when that happens your language will change because people speak according to what they see is that correct when the word of god becomes your eyes then the words that you speak will be consistent with what you are seeing so that when men say there is a casting down and you say there is a lifting up people look at you and say are you stupid but then you tell them i'm a citizen of a foreign kingdom Jesus said my kingdom is not of this world are you following me now so faith is the lifestyle of the kingdom unfortunately for many people they have decided to pick certain aspects of the kingdom and then for others say faith is not necessary faith is for word of faith people and so on and so forth 
faith is the lifestyle of the kingdom. That our impulses in the kingdom are a derivative of what the word of God tells us. Are you following me now? Not what you are seeing. We have so many believers who go and yell at God. God you are not faithful. God you are not this. God you are not that. But then you become a true citizen of the kingdom. When you see the things that happen around you. These are things that can weigh you down. But then as a citizen of the kingdom you arise. There's no money at home. And your parents are running helter skelter. And you tell them we are blessed. And they look at you and say we understand you these foolish children. And you tell them no no no. I'm not trying to pretend it. I'm not trying to convince myself. I'm drawing forth from a reality. Based on what I have seen. God's word. And then you sing. You don't have to worry. I like that song. And don't you be afraid. Hallelujah. And while you are singing, people cannot understand. And you tell them, I hear in my spirit the abundance of rain. And while you are saying that, they just demote your father. And you say, I still hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And people say, now we understand this child is getting mad. And then you enter and shut the door. And they are waiting to hear you cry. And all they hear is, thank you, Jesus. You say, Lord, I thank you. I brace up. And your auntie doesn't have a child. And then she turns and she says, Lord, I thank you. Because I'm a mother of nations. And she goes to the market to buy baby clothes. And people say, now, oh, madam, is this embarrassment not enough? And then suddenly, the king of this kingdom sees true citizens of the kingdom. Let me tell you something, friends. Do you know why the angels respect us so much? They are compelled by the awe and the majesty of God that they see. Are you following me now? You know, for many of you, I've had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And um, when I saw him, all I can remember is that I was a dead man on the floor. I still don't know how his face looks like. But I was seeing him. And he just stretched forth his hands towards me and a beam of light. The entrance of thy word give it light. That was supernatural impartation directly by himself. Hallelujah. And I got up with a supernatural encounter that I've not recovered from till this day. And I'm not sure I'll recover forever. Hallelujah. So for many of us who say, God, I need to do a discussion with you. If I meet God, I will tell him this, I will tell him that. You think so? Brothers and sisters, if, you, if it's the real Jesus you see, you will clap for yourself if you have the gods to at least look at him. And you will understand why Isaiah said, Woe is me. The holiness and the majesty and the awe. So when he directs the angels, the angels find it an honor. They say it's an honor to serve the king. But then when the angels look at the earth realm, then they see one who has never seen a vision. You don't know how God looks like. Yet you, you were not born when the Bible was written. Yet you say, Lord, I believe. And the angels say, what is this? And even in the midst of challenges, you say, I believe. I believe. My voice is gone. I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. And the angels wonder. And they say, what's going on? And you begin to speak and say, my life is blessed. Although you cannot see what is happening in the realm of the spirit, the word of God becomes your eyes. At that point, you become a true citizen of the kingdom. And hear me, friends, it takes a while. It takes a while for you to begin to live by faith. Don't let anybody make you feel bad. It takes a while. And let me tell you how God does it. He, beca he begins to dethrone everything that gives you strength and conviction outside his word until you are reduced with nothing but him. He causes every other thing you trust aside from him not to work for you. And then you find out that you are left with only one option. 
Then you say, yes, you are the king. I finally agree. Of kings. Because a time will come your intellect will be too crippled to continue the journey. A time will come your money will be your connection and everything you know. At that point, you will begin to lose confidence in every other thing. And he will make you so inadequate that if you ever take a step outside him, you will feel like dying. Then you begin to sing Steve's song. And I am desperate for you. Hallelujah. He brings you to a point where he's not just your God, he's your life. That you know that if you ever take a step without him, you are dead. See, it's not ordinary for you to love God so much that you can lose everything for him. You must come. It happens by an experiential revelation that he is your life. God will test everything that you have that you exalt to be God. There are many things that represent God in our lives. For many people is money. Silver and gold. For many people is charisma and fame and influence. For many people is anointing. For many people is ministry. God is such a jealous God that you will dethrone everything. So every time you come into God's presence, as you fellowship with him, you know what is happening. There is a death process going on. It is a dethroning of everything. And then he keeps rising above the list. Until he gets to that point where he sits at the seat of your heart. At that point, nothing else moves you. The things of this world will seize their grip over your life. Hallelujah. And there are many people who, when it's time to worship God, as you kneel down, you just remember, ah, I bought this 30,000. There's still a process of death that needs to go on in your life. Because you come to a point where you live totally based on his word. Can I tell you something? Most of the the sorrow and the the grief that many believers have is because they do not understand the faith life. Are you following me now? A dead man cannot feel it even if you match him. Is that correct? A dead man cannot feel it even if you insult him. When you criticize a dead man, what's his response? Many of us are so sensitive and overreactive and that's because we are still alive in ourselves. We have not come to a point where the word of God becomes our life. Are you listening to me? When you get to that point, no matter how attractive a thing is, if it is not... You get to a point in your life where if it is not consistent with God's word, I am not ready. Let me ask you a question. How many of you can truly say right now, inside and outside, that you have gotten to a point in your life where you can say, if the word of God does not lead me, I'm not ready to move. How many of you here can come to a point where you say, every success i don't care how attractive it is if it is not founded on the word of god i'm not interested there are many of us praying and trusting god i'm a millionaire the day even if it's satan that waves five naira, that's how you follow you say god will settle it later but the faith life is a life that is absolutely tied on the word of god hallelujah that my joy my satisfaction my fulfillment is a perfect derivative of god's word i find no other satisfaction outside his word his word represents my fulfillment i believe his word you are not a believer because you just came out for altar call you are a believer because you have come to a point where the word of god is king over your life i believe every truth in god's word i will I believe in it if I never experience anything that looks like success in my life I've said it here and here again God forbid but if I die of sickness 
the last word that will come out from my mouth before I die is by his stripes I am healed. I have come to a point where I don't believe God's word because of the result it will produce. I don't have any other option. Even if the word of God never produces a result. If God tells me now, Josh, the whole concept of heaven, it was just my way of making you love me. I said, God, no problem. I have so long as I will be with you. If you will be in hell, that's where I want to be. I come to a point where my life is governed by the word of God. Hear me, friends. This is the secret of success that many believers fail to live by and they get whipped and punished again and again. You must get to a point where the word of God becomes the governing factor of your life. Please hear me inside and outside and take seriously what I'm saying. The kingdom life is a faith life. The prosperity, the success, the increase and the fulfillment of a believer is tied to the voice of God and the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. It says, if thou will um, diligently hearken also to the voice of God, he said, it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commands which I commanded this day. He said that the Lord will, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the earth. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken. We have a bunch of stubborn believers that don't know how to obey the principles of their king. Hear me friends. God created this universe. He has put a principle to govern your life. It's one definition of foolishness to live outside the word of God. We try to live outside God's word and we want the blessings that are in the word. Hallelujah. A true citizen of the kingdom is number one one who is loyal to the king but number two one who makes the word of god his priority 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 it's not the issue of being spiritual or not it's your life he said my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings he said do not let them depart from your heart keep them in the midst of your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart he said they are life to those who find them you program yourself to be a victor and a success in life when you allow the word of God govern every step of your life we are where we are by the grace of God simply because we have inclined ourselves to hear the voice of God I will do nothing in my life without the voice of God I will do nothing. I will go nowhere. I cherish his voice and I cherish his word. Because his word and his voice are one. The word of God is my life. The word of God is my life. Everything the word of God says not to do, I will not do it. I will not try it and see what happens. I'm not ready. Hallelujah. The Bible says for you to be a tither. He says that's the way the heavens are open. There's no point arguing. People argue and say this and that. And they are chopping our money in the church. And so on and so forth. And then they remain poor. They remain broke. And they get angry at those who are prospering. That's the point. If you refuse to obey God's word. You will always feel angry at those who are obeying it. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says... God gives grace to the humble. He says you are peace the proud. When I find this in the word, I align my life by the spirit. And then you begin to see unending grace. I mean unending, inexplainable grace. Dimensions of grace that even you the career cannot explain. Hallelujah. He said if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. See, hear me friends. You must take this word seriously. Search the scriptures. You are not trying to be spiritual by doing it. It's your life. 
Hallelujah. I believe God's word. I believe what God's word says about me. This is my life. This is the constitution of my life. I'm not doing it because I have a responsibility in ministry to prepare a message. No, it's my life. Can you get to that point where you are totally governed by the word of God? If you tell me to drink and smoke, I will not just tell you no. If I tell you no, that's not enough. I will tell you no. Because it is against the constitution of my kingdom. Are you following me now? If someone comes to meet me and say, Josh, let's compromise the way of God. I'll tell him, no, I am bounded by the word of God. I put my life on the line. And I tell you the truth, friends. I have tested it. I can tell you this word works. This word works. You see, Peter said that which we have seen that which we have heard he said that which our hands have handled these are the things that we speak i have one guarantee it may not come as fast as you want but if you stay with this word it will build an enviable future for you every other factor notwithstanding hear me there is no challenge you want to face in this life or you are facing now that someone has not faced a worse one people have come out of unimaginable challenges to emerge gloriously in life there's none of us here that has an excuse so why do so many believers experience weakness and setbacks in their lives although they are called kings i'll tell you why it's not because they are not filled with the holy ghost it's not because they don't have a bible it's not because they don't come to church they have not come to a point where beyond church and religion are you listening to me i don't separate my personal life my spiritual life as it were everything is centered around the word whatever i'm doing with you that is not directly linked to the word i'm not interested call me a fanatic but i'll still be successful and you will need me badly hallelujah are you following me so in the kingdom life we must come to a point where you see friends you hear us talk about this word of god thing this word of god thing take it seriously we have seen some of our fathers who kept this word and in their old age they proved everything that scripture a man tell us born he lived the prosperity of the scripture he healed the sick he casted out devils he raised the dead he has fulfilled every mandate that my eyes can see that god said a citizen should fulfill hmm. Humorously, Jimmy keeps saying it that he must do everything the Bible says we should do before he goes to be with the Lord. He has healed the sick, he has casted out devils. I think he's just remaining the dead. Hallelujah. And he challenges himself every time. I remember one time I went to pray for a dead man who was dead three days. Hallelujah. And we went to uh faculty of medicine. And they said I should come. And I went in. And I saw all kinds of dead men. I said, where is he? Where is the one I'm supposed to pray on? And then they led me to the dead man. And when I looked at him, three days dead, you better have faith. You, or at least you better know God. You have to believe in something in that. And I laid my hands on him. Called for the spirit, prayed. I did it three times. When he didn't wake up, I told the people, get me out of this place. Get me out of this place. Remember my saying, I'm not Jesus Christ. I didn't die for anybody's sins. I didn't collect money from everybody. In everything, God is still glorified. And I encourage the people. I told them, make plans for the burial. Jesus is Lord. We who are alive should press into God and love him more. How about that? Now, you may laugh at me, but the next time I go to pray for a dead body, for many of you, your first challenge will be to look at one. If you will ever raise a dead man, you have to stand before one. From faith to faith. Hallelujah. So God keeps training your faith. Can I tell you something, friends? You must stop complaining and shouting. Change your perception over situations and circumstances. Are you following me? I was born by this. 
I see every situation and challenge that comes as an opportunity to be schooled in faith. To become a better citizen of the kingdom. And that's why I, I never, never get angry and offended now. I know it sounds like I'm very, very serious about what I'm saying. To come to a point where I'm depressed. He said, Josh, what's wrong? I said, Kai, man, this kingdom thing. I know that God is a good God. And I know that his word is true. He reigns. He reigns. Help me worship us. My voice is gone. He is standing by my side. To bring his word to pass. To bring his word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. Lord, you reign. He reigns. Our God. He's an awesome God. If we spend half the time we spend on movies staying on the word if we spend half the time we spend going from pillar to post to beg uncles and aunties on the word am i challenging you if we spend half the time looking for connection this and that and that i've told you this thing in this place and i'll say it again take your eyes off men they will disappoint you again and again and again the best of every man is still a man oh but i know one who can be trusted i know one who can be trusted he said by this time tomorrow Kabo Satabaya. only god can make that audacious statement and look at your life and say by this time by this time mercy prosper nigeria will be celebrating you by this time the world will begin to come to pass only god can make that kind of statement but can i tell you something the bible says the secrets of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants the secrets of the lord are not with everybody they are not with every christian they are with them that fear him another word there is them that are serious with him you can't be one leg in here one leg out lord i love you things are working lord i hate you things are not working you must come to a point where you say if i perish i perish that you hold on to god's word i never allow myself to speak anything outside god's word no one will preach me into that thing i will never call myself a failure because god's word never called me a failure this is the principle of the kingdom are you following me now i am not weak and beggarly i am everything the word of god says i am but how can you walk in light of a truth you do not know and how will you know it until you search it out there are many of us who don't even have bibles you have all kinds of dictionary you have 48 laws of power 96 laws of increase 25 laws of victory and you don't have a bible i am i guarantee you you are not yet successful or oh, one the fire burnt it to one side and then it starts from matthew chapter 5 and then we pride in these things and then you hold your bible and chuck it at the side of your pocket hmm. they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh you see this bible forget how ugly and old it looks there is life i'm sucking out the life in this bible i believe it with all of my heart there is nothing this world cannot do for you there is no problem hear me it always looks impossible until you see the result that the word of god brings it always looks impossible is it a job is it debt is it financial hardship is it your life is it sickness and disease i am confident let let eternity prove me wrong but i am confident that this is the believer's way of life oh i believe the word the word of god tells me that jesus christ left the holy spirit to school me and to build me i am confident i have the holy spirit i'm confident my confidence is not because i'm praying in tongues my confidence is because the word of God says so. I like a beautiful song that um, 
many of us those of us who had the privilege of attending Sunday school some of us didn't attend you always run away they say come on Sunday school that's when you go and cause trouble you scratch people's car you paint things you steal money you buy ice cream with your offering it says Jesus loves me this I know why it didn't say because I'm a male or a female for the Bible tells me so for can you come to a point in your life where your confidence in life is because the word of God says so I believe God's word I believe God's word the word of God is the basis of my life I walk by the word I talk the word I live the word I act the word I truly believe this word I'm not saying it because I'm preaching I truly believe the word of God that's why I invest in the word that's why I invest in the word for many of you all you have is free our daily manner that they share during one conference you will never how come we don't invest in the things of the kingdom hallelujah we buy clothes we buy Gucci shoes and everything and we pride let me tell you you are an insecure man if all that you have is suit and money and cars and all of these things the word of God show me a man that has nothing in this life but God's word I show you one who the world will celebrate but show me a one a man that that's why I don't envy any unbeliever I don't care what he has they are standing on slippery ground the recession has shown us people woke up overnight and became poor and broke the world millionaires no I'm not ready for that kind of life I need a life that is founded upon the rock hallelujah can you reduce the key let me sing a very beautiful song some of us who came from orthodox it's time for you to appreciate me hallelujah my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus love and righteousness only I dare not trust That's a powerful the song. sweetest rain but only lean on, on Christ name. the solid rock on Christ the solid rock every other ground is truly sinking sand no matter how short it looks it's sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand hallelujah every other ground there are many grounds grounds of connection grounds of money grounds of i know this i know that grounds of intellect i'm telling you the truth they are sinking many people are suffering and languishing and getting disappointed that after all of their education and their strength in themselves it still looks like satan is still above them but a true citizen of the kingdom is one who cherishes the words of the king knowing that the king is a loving king and he will not tell you what to destroy you hallelujah we are going to pray for five minutes and then you sit down and then I'll finish up just hold your bible and we are going to pray in tongues if you truly came with one hold your bible you want to embrace it embrace it we are going to pray in tongues for five minutes that God you impart a desire for your word go ahead and pray please make sure this is not the time to pinch and look at your neighbor take it seriously this is a training I believe your word I have no other option Come on, pray in the spirit. That's why you came. Inside and outside. Your word is my guiding light. Your word is my life. I live by your principles. No compromise. Pray in the spirit. 
Patali Balabado Seketele Brigade Alabada de Lemona She Patali Bakatali Brigade Seketelea She Posa Kata E Palamon de Lemo Hold your Bible Mani Hold your Bible Hold your Bible Pray in the Spirit Shake the Baba Baba Lenche Pokoto Basana I take your word seriously I take your word seriously I'm a doer of the word. I take your word seriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be seated. When you get to that point in your life where you respect God's word. Where you value God's word. He said, how amiable are your laws. They are my meditation all day long. Buy an mp3. Buy an ipod. Stuff your phone with the word of God. Messages that teach you the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Get worship songs. Lie down in your room. And saturate yourself. Faith is coming into your spirit. As you hear. You may lie down in a little room. With nothing to eat. But there is an investment. You are becoming a true citizen of the kingdom. And you keep pressing. In the spirit. From day one. To day two. To day three. One day you will step into the seventh day. And it will. You cannot even stop. The cycle of victory. And success that will begin to follow you. We have a lot of believers lazy at the word. Oh, pray for me, pray for that, especially in the south. That's why they like prophets as an antidote to their laziness. People who will not stay with God's word. Let me tell you something there are some things that even one gallon of olive oil will not do for you. You've got to stay in God's word. Are you listening to me? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you. So let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Can you get to that point in your life where you live by the word where you talk by the word your friend comes to meet you and say how oh, is the struggle now and you tell him no um, I appreciate you but God is working I belong to a kingdom and that kingdom has an economic system every opportunity you have you are talking about the kingdom what are the consequences men will insult you men will call you a fanatic so what about it Hallelujah. Many of you will break out of certain associations you cherish on account of your seriousness with God. Love is a command in the Bible. There is no command that you must relate with everybody. The Bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness? With right, light got to do with darkness and what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? Hallelujah. You come to a point where you get serious. Can we get to that point where everyone who attends Koinonia is serious with the word of God? I don't mean this hypocritical seriousness that we just do when we are looking for something. Crash Christianity that there's, there's a situation at hand and then everybody becomes serious. No, it must become your life. How serious are you with the principles of God's word? The Bible talks about tithing for instance. How many of you are truly committed to tithing? Ah, God understands. Let me tell you something. God will not change his rules because of you. He didn't change it because of Jesus Christ. He will not change it because of you. The wages of sin is death. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Jesus died. At his death, he cried and said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak, Sabachthani. The father still didn't change his mind. Let me tell you something. 
if you think you keep violating God's word and get away with it, can I tell you something? A time will come you will face a bitter, not because God will punish you. It will be the consequences of obeying his, disobeying his principles. Hallelujah. Speaking the word, for instance, for many of us, we feel that it's not an important thing. And we feel embarrassed speaking the word. Just say, okay, this thing makes people like children. This coin on yourself. How can a mature person just be jumping and be saying, I am this, I am that. But when you are in trouble, you talk about it. Is it not with your mouth you use and confess it? You keep talking. You tell everybody from Pilot, I am in trouble. I am in trouble. Why can't you speak and say, I am victorious? So says the word of God. You mustn't have a special prayer time. You can be on your way. You can be in your job. And you say in the name of Jesus, the word of God works in me. The word of God is producing the character of the kingdom in me. Hallelujah. The Bible says, what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? The word of God gives us boundaries as believers. Hallelujah. And so that we live by the principle of faith. See, faith is our concept of faith. I thank God God is helping us. Because for many believers, our concept of faith has just been a spiritual operation used to receive things. That's the general concept of faith that is taught in church. But I'm teaching you today that faith is a way of life. Are you following me now? For many of us, we think faith is only an operation when you need to receive something. No. Faith is your way of life. Faith is the way of life that is governed by the word of God and the voice of God. Governed by the principles of the kingdom. God is speaking to us this night that if we seriously want to become citizens of the kingdom, take God's word seriously. Job the richest man in the east gave us a blueprint of his success. He said, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle, the Bible called him the richest man in the east. He was so blessed. He had children. He had everything that represented success. David tells us his secret. A man who loved God and had everything life could offer. He said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. He said, cast me not away from your presence. It was David that said, how amiable are your laws, O Lord. They are my meditation all day long. He said, as the deer pants after the water book, so my soul pants after you. Hallelujah. I bring to you a very simple but life-changing teaching tonight that you must come to a point where the word of God becomes your principle of operation. No matter what is happening around me, if the word of God tells me otherwise, I choose God's word. Are you listening to me? I don't need to wear an expensive shoe to know God is faithful. The word of God tells me already that his name is faithful and true. Are you listening to me? I believe God's word. God is asking us a question and it's not a general question. God is asking you. God is asking you. Do you believe my word enough? I be in your fashion uh, design school and whatever. Do you believe God's word? Do you believe God's word? God is asking a serious question. Do a believer is not just one who has gotten born again. A believer is one who has come to a point where his entire life revolves around the world has nothing to do with the church you attend has nothing to do your, with your denomination this is the secret of life i was told a humorous story about a man a very wealthy man who had some very stubborn children and there was this young boy among them and he wrote his will and you know just shared so many things and then when he was about to die he called the son and he said son come and he said i'm about to die and he brought out a brand new bible and he gave it to the son he said this is what i will give you it will make you a champion 
and it will change your life and then the father died and the child threw the bible away and tried to make it on his own the child suffered so much until he, i mean he suffered so much and then one day in his frustration after hitting himself from pillar to post he came to a point where he decided to pick up the bible at least just to look at it and when he opened the bible he was just reading reading he wasn't even getting the point and then mistakenly he turned to the last page of the bible and he saw a check that his father left and the father said if he takes the bible seriously then he should see that check and if he sees the check that was all his inheritance and from this story it was a true story someone was sharing it's something that happened i heard a preacher and when he saw it he broke down and he cried because for years the father deliberately put the check at the last page of the bible and said there is no how he can take this bible seriously without at least turning to the last page to see and while this guy was suffering the empires of his father were being occupied by banks and financial institutions because nobody could claim them and here was the inheritance that the father left with him do you know that applies to many of us we have been running and crying over what the word of god can give us as kingdom citizens we must come to a point where we separate ourselves and stay with the world what challenge are you going through in life what area of life is not working for you have you ever taken out time to stay with god's word diligent study with god's word and in the place of prayer and watch the hand of the lord transform your life god is bringing this word tonight to draw us back to the place of the world that as citizens of the kingdom as ordinary as this book looks it contains the values of the kingdom and if you take it seriously and then respect the governor of that kingdom how come we respect men more than god if i walk to you now and i tell you come and collect a check of five million naira tomorrow you'll be so glad and you even announce to your friends you say i've hammered but how come the word of God says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you said God they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and a hope and many times we turn to God and shout and yell and insult and say God you are not faithful can you let the word of God become your eyes tonight to say Lord I believe your word I choose to believe your word I'm not just believing your word because of the result it will produce I have come to a point where your word is life and I live by the operation of the word of God is what the Bible calls faith faith is not necessarily about receiving faith is about living according to the word of God and we are going to pray and I really want us to pray and say God for many of us we need to pray and say Lord please let there be a baptism of a desire for your word a desire for your word for many of us morning till night you are visiting friends everybody oh visit this visit that visit that can you stay with god's word and take god's word seriously i don't just mean opening the bible and putting it on your chest and sleeping till night i mean being alert wake up study god's word pray it into your life believe the principles and constrain your life to live by it i have one guarantee you will emerge a success you will emerge victorious and we are going to pray we have one simple desire that the word of god will put that the holy ghost will put a desire for intimacy with him and for his word in our lives are you listening to me bigger than ministry that we begin to live like true citizens of the kingdom so that you don't come to a point where you say something and people turn and say sorry are you born again for many of us tonight you came for koinonia but god is asking you when will you be serious with my ways the bible said he showed israel his acts but to moses he showed moses his ways you know what his ways are his principles 
If I give you 1,000 Naira, you still need me to get it tomorrow. If I show you how I got it, you will be able to get it whether or not I'm there. He showed the Israelites wanted his acts. You know what we are teaching here by the grace of God? The ways of God. It's not just enough for you to see power and anointing. But it's for you to also understand the operation of the spirit. So that you begin to command perpetual victory in your life. Hallelujah. And so we are going to pray. In the next 10 minutes, I don't know how you are going to cry to God. You want to lie down. You want to. Now it's not the time to pinch people and just smile and say, I was the message. You can ask that after the program. Hallelujah. Now is the time to rise up. Rise up on your feet, everyone, please. Can we? Inside and outside. We are going to raise a cry and say, Lord, I take your word and your ways seriously. 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 I stake my life at your word. I believe your word. I'm a doer, a doer of that word. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. The lifestyle of the kingdom is the lifestyle of faith, the lifestyle of the word. Speaking the word, doing the word, living the word, knowing the word. The word of God is all I know of. Our fathers lived it. Their lives have become an epistle for us to follow. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Through faith, staking their lives, they encountered impossible situations. Yet the word of God brought them out. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Oh, I take your word seriously. It's my life. Hallelujah, it's my life. Inside and outside. Say, Lord, I take your word seriously. They are life to those who find them. They are life if you care to find it. It will be life to you. And health is a secret of divine health. It's a secret of divine protection. It's the secret of increase. The secret of favor. The word of God living in me. Living in me. Come on, pray. I take your word seriously. I take your word seriously. No matter what happens to me, go ahead and pray. I refuse to look at the things that are seen. I refuse to look at the sickness in my body. I refuse to look at the challenge in my family. I look at your word. Come on, go ahead and pray. God is faithful by whom we were called into the fellowship of his son. God is faithful. He will not lie by these two immutable things it is impossible for God to lie the just shall live by faith by the operation of God's word for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the endless expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God living by the word will make you a champion living by the word will make you the head and not the tail I'm not just talking about climbing scriptures talk the word live the word speak the word obey the word totally 100% obedience come on obtain grace obtain grace obtain grace come boldly before the throne of grace come boldly don't come with timidity you are washed in the blood of the son of god you are holy you are pure you are righteous say lord i receive grace i receive grace inside and outside make sure you're praying grace to live by the word no matter what i see no matter what I feel, no matter what the doctors are saying, no matter what the economy is saying, 
no matter what situations and circumstances are saying I live by the word I live by the word I live by the word dedicate your life commit yourself to the practice of the word say Lord grace grace to stay with the word grace to be a student of the word grace who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain at the shout of grace at the shout of grace at the shout of grace go ahead and declare grace to be a doer of the word grace to let the word of God become your eyes go ahead and pray say the word becomes my eyes my perception is based on the word my response to life is based on the word my reaction is based on the word my convictions are based on the word my confidence is based on the word i believe the word i respect the word i live by the values of the word heaven and earth shall pass away but my word abided forever hallelujah you are truly not a citizen of the kingdom until you begin to live by the word Jesus said to Satan said it is written man shall not live by bread alone bread there is a prophetic symbolism of your sensory perception he said but by every word man can live by every word I live by his every word his every word for my health his every word for my finances his every word for this ministry his every word for all that concerns me I believe his word that his thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil I know I have a blessed tomorrow I know my tomorrow is greater than my today hallelujah hold the hands of someone pair yourselves into two as we take this next prayer point please take it seriously you're going to speak I like you to take it seriously instrumentalist I like you to follow us as we pray hallelujah you're going to begin to speak God's word into that person's life and say in the name of Jesus every blessing I know the word of God says keep speaking the blessing over their health over their finances go ahead and pray take it seriously you shall not die but live you are healthy you are strong you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the country you are above pray pray you are the head and not the tail you are victorious in this life you are more than a conqueror you come out of every predicament you come out of every challenge go weeping and joy for a night but joy 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 comes to the morning joy go weeping and doors for the night joy pray for your neighbor call him the head call him the best call him anointed call him victorious the word of god will bring you out of that sickness will bring you out of that failure will bring you out of that tragedy release grace prophesy grace prophesy grace to your neighbor grace to live by the word grace to obey the spirit of god grace to respect the values of the kingdom (laughs) 
Speak over their families. Your family is coming out of every challenge. Yes, they may have cried. They are coming out. They are coming out. They are coming out by the word of God. Out of that financial situation. They are coming out. Jesus will be glorified in your life. Jesus will be glorified. You are lifted. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. From glory to glory. Grace to grace. Power to power. Increase to increase. Victory to victory. Grace to say no to sin. Grace to say no to Satan. Grace to say no to every deceitful practice of the flesh. Grace to say no to every way that is not of God. No matter how accepted it is by society. Grace to ride against the existing status quo. Inside and outside, the Lord is standing where you are praying. Take it seriously. Grace, grace, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Very quickly, just in one or two minutes, the Lord just instructed me for us to do this. Hallelujah. You're going to speak the word grace upon your life. Are you listening to me? That's what God says. I should tell them. He said, tell them to release grace upon themselves. I know that many of us do not understand the power of grace. See, the grace of God can do for you what you will not be able to do all your life. The grace of God will make your life sweatless. I'm telling you. It's the grace of God that can say you sleep in the prison today. And wake up as a prime minister tomorrow. It's the grace of God that took Hadassah from a hamlet and made her queen. The grace of God made Daniel to reign through the dispensation of three kings. Go ahead and prophesy grace upon yourself. Take it seriously. Grace at the shout of grace. Grace. Grace over my finances. Over my life. Grace. Grace. The grace of God exalting me. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn, and I'm anointed with fresh oil. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. Grace, I shout it. Grace, the unmerited favor, the unmerited favor. Lord, according to your instruction, we are shouting grace. Grace over your family. Grace over your body. The Bible says, Who are thou mountain? Before Zerubbabel. Grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For many of you who can turn, we are rounding up. Zechariah chapter 4. We are citizens of the kingdom. We are not ordinary. We know the laws of the kingdom. Zechariah chapter 4. If you can project it, that would be great. Zechariah chapter 4. Verse 6. Zechariah 4 verse 6. If you are there, say amen. amen. Then he answered and spoke unto me saying this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel saying not by power nor by might hmm. he said not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the Lord God of hosts verse 7 
Who art thou? O great mountain. He said before Zerubbabel. Before Joshua Selman. They could us here. He said who art thou? O great mountain. He said before Joshua Selman. Thou shalt become a plain. Hear me. Listen. He said. And he shall bring forth the headstone. Thereof with the shoutings. Of grace. Grace. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. 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 Your name is called. Emmanuel. about my many struggles but by your spirit and your grace I'm confident you'll solve them but this is why I'm here I'm here to say I love you I'm here just to let you know I adore One more time as the deer pants for the water. As the deer pants for the water, so so. Special number. I'm seeking you as a precious jewel. I'll be your You are my only Lord. Lift your hands, lift your voice, and let's acknowledge you. Yeah. When I am weak, you are the treasure that I see. Not to give up. I'll be a fool. You are my own. Do 
sopra cada variada, já pra acabar o sobre pela variada cada Jesus, we acknowledge you. Mortal men empowered by a dimension of reality beyond this realm, doing wonders in the name of the Lord. Jesus, we truly bless you. We truly bless you. We truly bless you. We truly bless you. We truly love you. We truly bless you. We're not using you. We love you. Deeply love you. Take me deeper, deeper in love with you, Jesus, hold me close to your embrace, take us deeper, deeper than we've ever been before. For we just want to love you more and more. How I long to be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a wonder you are. Jesus, Jesus. What a wonder you are, oh Jesus, what a wonder you are. Beautiful rose of Shara, what a wonder you are. What a wonder you are, oh Jesus. Don't look at me, go ahead and worship him. What a wonder you are. The lion of the tribe of Judah, what a wonder you are. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, see what you've made out of my life. How could I be ungrateful? I want you to reflect in one minute. Look what he's done in and through your life. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been by my side, now may Israel say, But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my hand. Sing it as a revelation. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my hand.
Jesus, we love you. This is why we're here to express our love. You have been good to us. We cannot deny your hand in our midst. You have been good to me. I see your goodness all around. I see your faithfulness. And Lord, together with your people, we acknowledge you. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. Some may trust in their intelligence. Lord, but find the people tonight who trust only in the name of our God. You have wiped our tears. You have, you have exalted us and given us a name. We return thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we continue in one minute, I'd like you to honestly open your mouth and tell the Lord that area of challenge in your life. That area that is making you to not praise God the way you should. Lord, I want to praise you, but this finances is eating me up. I want to praise you, but my health. Lift your voice. In one minute, talk to him. Be very sincere and open before your maker. Because we believe, that's why we are here. Jesus, hear the cry of your people. You see their pains and you see their hurts. Who but you, O oh God, is able to wipe their tears and give them testimonies as the glory of your presence moves all over this place. Spare not your hand, O oh God, stretch it. Touch your people. Hallelujah. Jesus, we enthrone you. Participate in the worship is doing something to your spirit. Standing in the midst of all, we raise you high with our praise. Saints of God, let's worship the mighty one. And as we time as we worship hey, as we worship In the place of worship you are not just singing worship engages the law of exchange it's like an intercourse between a man and his wife there is a transference of virtue right from the man to his wife give her time there will be evidence of that transference we call it pregnancy then she will give birth to a child 
that symbolizes her union with her husband. This meeting is called Koinonia. There are many dimensions you enter into, not just by preaching. The atmosphere of his glory brings you into it. All of a sudden you walk and find out that certain things become possible. Resolutions are happening in your spirit as you are worshipping. It's not just about songs. It's not just about songs. Surrender is happening as you worship. Conviction happening. Healings. Miracles. Impartations. So don't you think we are wasting our time? If this is all we do today, it will never be the same. Mike said something when he came up. He said if Buhari comes to greet you, right? If, if Obama comes to greet you, their presence has an implication on your destiny. Let me tell you, God does not just come. He's invoked. It's the same way you invoke the spirit of a man. And it is worship that invokes him. He chooses the dimension he wants to reveal to the people. And then he causes them to sing him in that dimension to come. Hallelujah. So please, I, I don't want you to be careless with this worship. It's a little moment of worship, but let me tell you, a lot can happen. I worship you, great I am. You are mighty in this place. I worship you, King of you are strong at breast and one. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing. Praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing. Praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing. Praises to Sujada nena ke Godia nena ke Godia Sujada nena ke To the mighty God Godia nena ke Godia Kosa Sujada nena ke Sujada Sujada Godia nena ke Sujada nena ke, Godia nena ke, Sujada nena ke, Mai che dona, Godia nena ke, Sujada nena ke, Ya Yesu, Godia nena ke, Mai pasa. Kasha re how 
ashamed and embarrassed where we see it as a waste of time to acknowledge you the bible says in all thy ways acknowledge you it says and he shall direct your path hallelujah please sit down if you can listen don't just come to koinonia to receive revelations come to learn wisdom especially those of us in ministry there is a force that backs your ministry when you can lead congregations to thank god in this listen please let's settle down in this time of ingratitude always complaining lord you would have done this thank you for the one you have done and we pass it very fast and then we begin to talk about the one he has not done it pays to be thankful and it pays to express gratitude lavishly this is the secret one of the biggest secrets in my life it's one of the biggest secrets in this ministry i can thank him and roll from end to end when david danced before god the daughter of saul who was his wife said no you are you should know that your status has changed and saul i mean um, um who was that david looked at her and said i am dancing before the god who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me hallelujah when you see something happening in your life and it's not happening everywhere thank god for it because that means it's not commercial when you see results in your life you see people's prayer point as your testimony thank god for it are we together yes. god bless you good evening everyone tonight i want to over the next few weeks i'm going to be challenging us on our spiritual lives our spiritual growth we have taught on the principles of the kingdom but i want to challenge us to make progress in our personal lives as far as the knowledge of god not just his ways his person so i'll be challenging us along that thought and um 
I have a very strong burden and a desire in my heart tonight and I'm trusting that God will grant grace to be able to speak to us. Let our hearts be opened. Isaiah 40, please. We'll read from verse 1 to 5 and then I'll teach on a few things and we'll pray. I trust God that uh, I'll be very brief tonight as a series so we can build from it. Let's see how we can pray. Um, media, please get ready. Maybe at some point you may give us worship as we pray together. Isaiah 40. Are you there? Say amen. God is doing something in your life every week as we gather in his presence. He's changing us. His word does not change people by default his word must be explained must be understood must be believed received and acted upon then there will be results the word of god does not change you by default are we together verse one to five comfort ye comfort ye my people saith your god two help us media please Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. He says, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. We're reading to verse 5. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. Let's read verse 5 together. One, to read. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord had spoken it. One more time. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to be challenging us today and the next few weeks. We're going to be discussing on um, several dimensions of the supernatural. Uh, it includes our understanding of the glory, our understanding of ourselves. You see, the way God designed the kingdom, the way God designed spiritual progress is such that you know yourself by studying Jesus Christ. Are we together? The only way you know yourself is by studying Jesus Christ. Are we together? In the kingdom, your relevance and your person is a derivative of all that Christ is. So he is our project of pursuit. Please listen. He is our project of study. The Bible says looking up to Jesus. The word looking up does not just mean looking, paying attention, pegging your focus on him. It's the same description that was given in Acts chapter 4 when he said look on us. Pay attention. We're about to do something that will change your life. So he says looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher let me start by saying something there is a formula for growing spiritually please everyone pay attention god is making you become something mighty there is a formula for spiritual growth you do not grow spiritually just by prayer just by fasting just by studying the bible there is a formula are we together if you have cement sand and zinc do you have a house no you have the materials for a house but the construction requires that the foundation is below are we together and the zinc is above if you take the zinc and put it in the foundation zinc is required for building but does that make a house so many of us combine spiritual things we pray here we fast here we read our bibles here but what we are becoming is not Christ it means that our combination to create the pattern that will make us like Christ is faulty 
So there is prayer in our lives. I agree. Are we together? There is fasting in our lives. I agree. There is the study of the word. There is studying books. There is corporate fellowship. But to what degree? It's just like you're cooking rice. You apply many ingredients, but not at the same level and not in the same quantity. Are we together? The quantity of rice you put is not the same quantity of salt. Are we together? If you put all of them at that level, as good as they are, they will not produce that. Are we together? So, the first picture is to find out what God intends for you to become. And that pattern man, according to scripture, is the Christ. Not just Jesus, the Christ. There is a big difference between Jesus and the Christ. Jesus was made the Christ. God's anointed, God's model for the believer. Are we together now? Now, please listen and pay attention as I build on these things tonight because they are very important for our spiritual growth. According to God's design for spiritual growth, the journey of a believer, hear me, should always start with an encounter of the person Christ. Not an encounter with prosperity. Not an encounter with healing. Not an encounter with breakthrough. Are we together now? You must meet the person Christ. The encounter with the person Christ is the only legitimate way to begin to navigate the kingdom properly. If at any time you are found exploring spiritual growth outside of the encounter with the person Christ, your growth will be imbalanced and you may delve into witchcraft. Are we together? Jesus said it this way, I am the way. In other words, it is when you meet me that you can be sure that the path you are taking is correct. Are we together now? There are so many believers, listen, who want to grow spiritually. But we think the secret to spiritual growth is just rema. Now, I've taught on different things. I've taught on principles of the kingdom. Are we together now? But let me tell you the truth. The foundation of spiritual growth is not principles. It's encounter. An encounter with a person, not his laws. A person. You can know the laws of tithing. You can know the laws of church growth. You can know all the laws that we have taught. And yet not know Jesus as a person. You can know him as a religious figure. That you strolled on stage here to confess him. But you must encounter the person, Jesus. Are we together now? I think I was discussing, we're discussing this morning with Ejimi, how that, and I say this with all humility, I'm so touched seeing our people, this, the way God started out with us, please listen, this is a very strong foundation. The path of spiritual progress that God started with us, and that's the path I have led and taught people for years. And all those who have followed this path have grown properly. That is your spiritual journey. Listen, when you come into Christ, your first assignment is to pursue God with a reckless abandonment. Not to pursue financial principles. Are we together? Not to pursue relationship and love and marriage. Husband and wife. Right? Girlfriend. Concubine. All these kinds of things. Not to pursue them. Now, but... The problem we have with the church now, and this is very serious, it's a serious issue, is that you find believers who come to Christ, the moment they get born again, they never care to find out this person called Christ, who is God's idea, God's pattern man. Are we together? What we do is we go and gather tapes which are important and we start indoctrinating ourselves with Greek and Hebrew words and start building our spiritual conviction on the fact that we are privy to certain informations and that we are able to quote scripture and then the moment we think we are anointed the next thing is we are thinking of starting ministry or we are thinking of relationship let me tell you something and I need you to hear this and learn because it's important you follow I was telling a Jimmy years ago 
when you got born again in here and I here for a long time you had no business with men or women you didn't even know who was male or female are we together when you got born again there was fire everywhere fire there was no room to even see human beings all you saw was fire morning till night are we together our joke was the presence of god our fun was the presence of god it was never about rema it was never even about anointing it was never about ministry it was about a hungry people desperate for a revelation and an encounter are we together yes that was the foundation so people's prayer life was not just to get prophecy and go and give people and build churches I would, some of you were part of these things are we together but right now there is a lot of catastrophe happening in our spiritual growth the average person gets born again and in four months he has a son he has a daughter are we together now moving around calling everybody my son my daughter i am pastor this i am prophet this i am apostle this they now look for one 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 church somewhere and, and start yoking themselves to rent to start organizing evening service church service double service uh, um, morning and afternoon service and all kinds of things i am telling you this if you follow that pathway you will never find god there is a formula to finding god are we together that's why you find out that everyone by the grace of god that we raised regardless of what they are doing that there is a level of backsliding you can't get to because of how you were trained no matter how backward you are there is a level to which your conscience will not leave you the level of godliness we enforce was at a high standard even those we call backsliders are qualified to be pastors in many churches are we together yeah. but right now there are people who have no business looking for husband and wife that's their object of pursuit take what i'm saying very seriously there are some of us here let me tell you at your level of spiritual growth you shouldn't be looking at any woman whatsoever under no circumstance same thing for ladies because you see people got into relationships and married it was god himself that had to turn the faces of people and say look you have tried you have labored in my vineyard i think it's time to get married but right now people come to church from day one as they are sharing the grace you are pursuing somebody you don't know anything about how can we see now we are a member of koinonia that spirit will rob you of passion because your motive is not genuine are we together so the object they were people who never had revelation but they had presence you come close to them you know they know god they may not be able to explain everything yet they don't understand the principle we walked in many results way before we understood the dynamics our hunger took us to that level it was later on god started saying this is what you are doing and we said ah so this is it because you see when you love god you are not looking for what to get from him you want to walk with him is god helping us so i think that's the number one thing we have to correct i can tell you over 70 percent of our prayer requests here is tied to things we want not the pursuit of god counseling that time was not this guy doesn't love me there is emeka there is gideon there is gabriel which one is the will of god it was never almost never part of counseling counseling was i had an encounter yesterday i need you to explain to me are we together i searched a scripture and while i was studying the glory of god came upon me sir what is the meaning of that we look forward to night times because night times were officially the times of holy ghost baptism so everybody will get people feel the holy spirit and will discuss it but right now you see a lot of people supposedly with a love for god listen to me very carefully but that hunger 
that appetite for spiritual things is even those who we call men of God are looking for revelation because it looks like in our generation of the is revelation that will give you a seat let me tell you there is a dimension revelation stops it will take presence brothers and sisters ah so we do not know the God we claim to represent we even fast and pray but our motives are corrupt we are fasting because you are saying kind i've been intimidated i saw a jimmy giving a word of knowledge abba if it's the kingdom it's also for me and then we go to fast are we together now and there is pride and arrogance people don't sit down to listen and learn the word again everybody is a man of god are we together everybody is a man of god we are only colleagues trying to grow together. That dangerous and devilish spirit, we must cast it out of the church in this city, around and as far as God's grace can take, and we cast it in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The foundation of your spiritual pursuit cannot be things. I see how many of us are obsessed with money. We want to do well. Every time you look at people, you see a Jimmy's tie and you are wondering how many thousand is this tie. When we were together, that time, nobody cared who your father was. We sat on the floor. It wasn't even in a carpet. On the floor. How you will know people were madly in love with God was, we had some of our ladies that we would call Ajebo ladies. You see those ladies rolling in the sand under the anointing with their hair and all their guy and they love God in the rain. You heard David sharing his testimony that sometimes in the rain it was not about noticing me but now you see Christians we say pray in tongues you pray for five minutes you are cleaning your mouth whether there's saliva honestly in my opinion you are not going far I can guarantee you is God helping us this is a series to challenge us God desires men and women who have paid the price to be his image carriers reflect us of his person but there is a key it does not start with looking for rema it starts with a hunger for a person i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land for all i want is you when I started out in ministry, I didn't know they used to give honorarium. Listen, I never knew they used to give honorarium. Years ago, I was invited to a church not too far from Philip Seidu here. We were living in front there. It was raining heavily and I knew God's people needed to listen. I was so passionate. I prayed, I fasted, I prepared and the rain was heavy. And you know the way that place is, there was a pool of water. And I said, no, nothing will stop me from blessing people. It's a privilege to bless God's people. A derivative of my love for God, not pursuit of ministry. I came out in the rain. I was praying in tongues with joy and with my Bible. It was Steve Strings who saw me around the church. He came out with an umbrella to stop me. I was quite humiliated in that service, but I didn't care. It was a privilege. Are we together? We inconvenienced ourselves with joy. I remember one time when we were preparing for crusade. We needed a lot of money. Our hunger for God. A Jimmy then, he was the only one among us who had computer. Right? And he put it up for sale. Put it up for sale. Passion and hunger. But today, we see the results of people. We do not want their hunger, but we want their results. How foolish. Are we together? There are many ladies who come to church now and you, you may see people like Shade, all these ladies that have been with us, you just think, oh, they just love God. These ladies were trained like men. We didn't train anybody. It was not gender. If we prayed for five hours, whoever was there, child, boy, girl, will participate. That was how people were built. Is God speaking to us? Let me tell you why many of us have not been able to experience the glory of God in our lives. It's not just about 
getting rema, packaging 10,000, kneeling down to receive a quick impartation. You now run and go and tell your members, I just came from Zaria. <laughs> you can't imagine what I'm carrying. No. A hunger. Everybody say hunger. Shout it, hunger. A hunger for God that drives you to his presence. Our fasting was not for things. I'm telling you, it was truly to know him. Then we had our spots. When it was daytime, everybody had his corner. Those to the dam. Those on top of buildings. Are we together? I was telling Ejimi, one of our tiny ladies, she was very, very small. Very small. You see her around 2 o'clock with her rechargeable. Don Muen song. She put on her socks. Very tiny. It's as if the rechargeable was, 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 was a bag of rice. That's how she would hold it. And that lady will come out around four. And don't forget that there was lecture in the morning. But people traveled. It was a sacrifice and a passionate love for God. But you get born again and you say, Lord, I'm born again. Where is the man? Man, man, man. You hear discussions of believers, love, relationship, uh, marriage, children. Hapa. As if God is irresponsible. Sisters, hear me, I'm challenging you. I'm telling you the quickest way to get a husband. Forget about it. And pursue God. Let every man come and meet you ardently in love with God. Let God be the one to give you to a man. You keep giving yourself and, and you see what happens. You let him give you. And for our brothers, listen. I've challenged us on establishment. I've challenged us in many things. But let me tell you. There is no establishment outside of an encounter with God. Because demons are real. You can build a house, you can buy the car, but you need an encounter. Are we together? Everybody shout, I need an encounter. This is the foundation. People had dreams. Not, I don't mean dreams of, I'm a champion. Dreams of, I am pressing into God. You would see people who would get born again. The lifespan of catching fire was one week. After seven days, I'll never forget. You remember a Jimmy, one gentleman who used to sleep on the bridge. Remember that man? That man got born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. He was addicted. He would sit down inside chapel from morning till night. He was sleeping under the bridge in flyover. That's the kind of fire. If you were born again, your born again had to be genuine. There was a strict system you passed through. From being born again straight, there was a brief session and then filled with the Holy Ghost. You, you will pray, we will hear. If we don't verify, we'll do it again. You had to be praying in fluent tongues. And there was a system that engaged your spirit. Everybody around you was too serious for carnality to find expression. You talked about women, you'll be alone. Because everybody was searching the Bible. Our discussions. Was he Hades or Gehenna? That was our discussion. But you hear people who just got born again. I'm challenging us. This is the reason why several people may not find God. Ministry. Ask Ejimi how many people spoke to me about churches and branches. You remember, sir? Oh, man of God. PFN were willing to give us an auditorium, train pastors just to come and start a church. And I went back and God said, no, you will die. We were so obsessed with seasons. We denied ourselves certain doors, even though they were open, to wait for seasons. But right now, everybody wants glorification, wants lifting. Hmm? A lady of 25, under pressure, time is passing. 25. A brother of, of, of 27. In, in four months, you have asked 20 ladies out. What is wrong with you? Are we together? Look at pastors. Pastors, don't, don't, they don't press into God. You never see them having retreats. They are watching football. They are traveling. They are doing ministry. What ministry do you have outside of his presence? Are we together? Daytime was for study. Night time was for ministry. That's what we did. 
I know how people run away if they even call you pastor. Pastor, this. We, we, we run away from it. But some of us quarrel everybody. You are calling me what? What did I hear you call me? John, me? The day you try that thing again, I will curse you. God truly found our heart. We loved him with everything. Are we together? That time, the cooler ministry was not for relationship. The cooler ministry was to propagate encounters. Because we're tired, laboring there. Sometimes they would look and our sisters would carry cooler. It was not that they were looking for husband. It was their contribution. The ministry of Dorcas. Genuinely for fire. Please, Koinonia, hear me. I'm telling you the truth from the depth of my heart. When you find God, you find wealth. When you find God, you find relevance. When you find God, you find everything. Are we together? Yes. My first challenge for us as we attempt to build this series is return to the place where you seek God. Write this down. What is an encounter? An encounter is not necessarily a vision. An encounter is not necessarily a, a supernatural transportation to the realm of heaven. That's not what I'm talking about necessarily. An encounter, listen, is an experience you have with God that furnishes the reality of his person. The reality. An encounter is God making himself real to you. Revealing his presence to you. Whether in, a, in the secret place. Whether as you labor in the study of the word. Are we together? People who were non-Christians. When they got born again in two weeks. Because of the atmosphere of encounter. Their lives changed. That's why people like Mama came. And you see what God is doing with him. Today he has become a great and mighty man of God. Encounters. Are we together? Pregnant women had testimonies that while teaching was going on, their children would just keep quiet. No movement, no pushing. Until it was time for prayers. Let me tell us the truth. There is too much distraction. This is what stops the voice of God. This is what stops a lot of things. We are distracted. I'm not necessarily talking, of, when I talk of distraction, I'm not necessarily talking of maybe immorality like drunkenness necessarily. We are distracted looking for things around God and not himself. We are studying the seven rivers of power. Why not study him as a person? We pride ourselves at these things. So you find out that people mock themselves with messages. We come and preach messages we do not have the experience to defend. Is God speaking to us? Please, if you're a pastor here or you're in ministry, listen to me. Return to the place of encounter. That's your greatest publicity. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will answer. Lead me, Lord, I will. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will answer. desires to reveal his glory God desires listen 
he did not just save us to take us to heaven please i'd like you to pay attention to what i'm sharing with you god did not save us just so we can become christians his intention was to make us revelations of his glory write that word glory down the word glory is from the hebrew word kabod the greek is doxa and the expression of the word glory is the essence of a man whatever makes that man who he is his wealth his wisdom his intelligence is called his glory so god's desire the eternal counsel of god is that christ becomes a reflection of the glory of the father the church the ecclesia in partnership with the holy spirit now becomes the revelation of the glory of the christ christ has reflected the glory of the father in his death burial and resurrection his exaltation what is left right now is for the church to align so much with the spirit that we become perfect reflectors of the glory of christ another word for glory is the possibilities of a man a man's glory is the extent of his possibilities so god wants us to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his possibilities glory can never be appreciated until it is revealed until it is revealed until it is made manifest the word became flesh right the word locked up in the realm of the spirit became flesh and dwelt among men he says and we beheld his glory god desires for his glory to be seen he desires for his multifaceted dimension to find expression in every territory but that dimension the conduits the custodians of the glory of god are not things not handkerchiefs not goya oils human beings are we together god's predeterminate counsel is for every one of us under the sound of my voice to become perfect reflectors manifestors of a divine life a divine reality that transcends this realm the glory of god is a revelation of everything that makes god god so when miracles happen that's the glory of god finding expression are we together yeah when signs and wonders happen and some in isaiah 40 the bible says that god desires we were made for his glory that all flesh will see it but there is a pathway that brings the sons of light to glory this is what i am teaching us i really desire that our lives become limitless conduits communicators of all the dimensions that can be in christ so when men look at you you are half man and half something else because you are a communicator of a reality that is beyond this realm your life is supernatural in every way because you are functioning from a realm a possibility and a reality you are reflecting a man who is not limited only limited by our disalignment is god speaking to us john chapter 2 the wedding in cana let's look at verse 11 the bible stated something very important there is god blessing us already tonight's teaching is going to challenge us john 2 let's just look at verse 11. everyone please read one to read this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of Galilee, and did what stop hold on it says jesus used miracles as a conduit to manifest his glory when he performed these miracles it was a turning of water to wine are we together now the bible says in doing that because he aligned to the father so much to an extent that the father could find expression through him to do an impossible thing he said he manifested forth his glory as a result people his disciples believed him let me translate this to you as a result the convictions of men over god became stronger you know why our convictions are very small there are very few dispensers of the glory of god 
Are we together? There are very few people who are truly prototypes of the possibilities that can be in God. You see the wisdom of men like ordinary people. Their intelligence like ordinary people. What everybody is crying about is what you cry about. There is nothing supernatural about your life. You are not a dispenser of the glory. Your words are empty, as empty as any philosopher's words. No backing, no authority, no power, no government, no throne. Nothing backs you. This beginning of miracles, he said, did Jesus, just verse 11. And he said, he manifested his glory. And as a result, the disciples believed. They believed. The essence of the faith life is not just to go to heaven. The essence of the faith life is not just to capture us from sin to become heaven bound. God's ultimate desire that will never change is that he will find a people who can be an expression of all that Christ is. It is God's desire that his multifaceted possibilities, all the dimensions that make him God, he wants it to find expression here. His healing, his wealth, his miracles, the possibilities, everything. So Christ is our model. The same way Christ aligned to reflect the glory of the Father. Right? In John 17, don't turn there, we'll turn there later on. Jesus was speaking and he said, Father, he said, now glorify thy son. To the end that thy son will glorify you by reflecting your glory. In theology, we call it the reflection principle. Where you reflect the glory of your superior. And the one below you is the one who reflects your glory. You never reflect your glory. You reflect the glory of the one you submit to. So Jesus reflects the glory of the father. The church reflects the glory of the son. The systems reflect the glory of the church. This is the eternal counsel of God. But there is something wrong because our understanding does not permit God to go with us to that extent where he can reflect his glory to us. So there is little of healing, little of prosperity, little of alignment, little of result from prayer, little in a congregation of 5,000 people, you have two testimonies. It's a shame to the revelation of the glory of God. I know we clap about it and we thank God, but honestly, it is a shame. Are we together? Yeah. God's glory cries for expression. He wants everything that he is to find expression through our lives. But the question is, are you willing to let your life become a conduit of that glory? Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. When there was a storm, everybody waited for the arrival of Jesus because his arrival was a revelation of the kingdom. The kingdom had come. Right? When he stepped into a house, they knew there was a miracle. Who, what do we expect when you show up? Trouble? Blessings? If I shake your hand, Pastor Femi, come please. If Pastor Femi shakes my hand, should something not change in my life? But does it happen? You see the reason why they don't value your shake? Because it never produced any result. The last time you prayed for somebody, they begged you and said, pray for me. You prayed and nothing happened. You met them after a long time. You said, any result? You said, absolutely nothing. I don't know what you did to me, but from that prayer, my life just knows dive. There is no manifestation of the glory. There is an extent of glory by the grace of God that we have been able to manifest. And this is what is responsible for everyone coming to sit down. You are coming to behold a dimension of the glory. Are we together? When there are healings, there are miracles. When the word of God comes and it's power to transform, it is a revelation of glory. When a barren woman all of a sudden gets healed, is a revelation of a dimension of God. When you master the laws of kingdom wealth and in an economy that is nose diving, your life is rising up like the ark of Noah. Something 
is different about your life. That's the revelation of the glory of God. The idea is not just heaven. The idea is a flawless life based on our alignment to the Christ. Is God speaking to us? Jesus is the revelation of the Father's glory. And the church was designed to be the revelation of the glory of the Christ here on earth. The ecclesia, the church, the Catholic church, the universal church. We were designed by God to be the reflectors. In other words, anytime people need to see Jesus, they should look for a Christian. Did you know that our presence should stop the frustration in the earth? Because we are the representatives of the government of Christ. So in every territory, when there is any challenge, when somebody sees a Jimmy, they say, thank God. What dimension of the glory of God has been committed to him? They are sure that that dimension will be dispensed and there will be solutions. But we are largely part of the problem in the earth. And this is why our voices are not heard as the church of God. We are part of the many world's religions. Nothing supernatural about our lives. They shake you. Somebody sleeps on the same bed with you. Demons oppress him the way they have been oppressing him from his room before he came. There is no presence of the divine life. There is no presence of an atmosphere. Oh, come on. No, it should never happen that way. The Bible says there is this treasure. Where? Not in heaven. In earthen vessels. There is this treasure in earthen vessels. Careers of the divine life. Communicating something very deep and very spiritual. That is who you are. If you think you are just a Christian who is, should just be planted you know, to a church. Taking communion on Sunday. Praying during prayer meetings. You will short circuit your understanding and the revelation of Christ in you. Everyone say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus, my life must reflect the glory, the power, the wisdom, the life, the possibilities of Christ Jesus. Yes. When people are stranded, the moment you show up, you bring a reality. Your speakings, right? It says, my heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. It says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So that when you come up and you begin to speak, I never expect to speak and you say, wow, that was an interesting contribution. No, because I'm speaking by the Spirit. Are we together? Yes. This is the foundation of true spiritual growth. The rewards of an encounter with Christ. The glory of God finds greater space in and through your life. You become a blessing. Everybody wants to be around you because that's what happened to Jesus Christ. They don't have to know you. Let me tell you one way you know the glory of God is on you. You become what the Bible calls delightsome. Have you heard that word delightsome? Delightsome does not mean beautiful and men are following you for marriage or, or you have money in your pocket and ladies want you to marry them into a life of peace. That's not what I'm talking about. That there is something on your life. It's magnetic. People come to sit down close to you and say, I don't know why. I've never shared this with anybody, but there is a challenge in my life. There is the glory of God. Dogs are a revelation of his person in you. This series is meant to, uh, to not just challenge you, but also activate something in your life. Are we together? Say, I'm a dispenser of the glory of God. Say one more time, I'm a dispenser of the glory of God. John 11 verse 40. Jesus said something remarkable. That was the story of the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead. John 11, let's look at verse 40. Please read it together. Everyone is projected for time's sake. One to read. Jesus said unto her, Sayeth I not unto thee, that if thou would believe, thou should what? If thou will believe, 
the key to experiencing the glory of God in your life is your conviction. Do you believe? Do you believe that you can see? Jesus said it himself. He said, if you can believe, nothing will stop you from seeing my glory. You can see my glory in prayer. You can see my glory in signs and wonders if you believe. The word believe is a very interesting word because it's not just the word agree. It's the word conviction. You can, it's not just an awareness like I agree with you, but I am persuaded about this reality. Pastor Femi is a pastor of Rema. I am persuaded. I'm not trying to agree. I, I know it is true. And nobody can convince me otherwise. That's what it means to believe. Faith now becomes the action you take based on that conviction. Are we together? Jesus himself said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So if I believe, my body can become a superconductor of the anointing and the presence of God. And the same way, brothers and sisters, if I have tuberculosis and I come close to a Jimmy, what will happen to him? Please answer me, what will happen to him? We call them communicable diseases, right? Because they can be transferred. It's not whether he agrees with me or not. I am a carrier of that disease. He just needs to come to the atmosphere. And he's implicated. He gets tuberculosis. Are we together? That means I can carry divine health. And come close to him. I've not prayed for him. And make it communicable. I can carry divine wisdom. Are we together? And you come and greet me. We talk for five minutes. You live with a level of intelligence you cannot account for. I'm not just talking of praying for people. I'm talking of them being implicated by the atmosphere you have created. Your alignment has created an atmosphere that does not leave people the same. So someone does not even know he's sick. It is your atmosphere that shows him he's sick. When he comes, he leaves and says, my goodness. So this thing I've been carrying is pain. I thought everybody has it. Hi. Are we together? Years ago, one gentleman was helping me wash my clothes. He was so happy. He just soaked the clothes. As soon as he soaked the clothes, we lift it up. That's how the power of God just carried him. That was the end of that washing for a very long time. The Bible says handkerchiefs. Right? You believe that? Acts 19. Handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Peter handkerchiefs and aprons it's not this thing we do in church where we just call people out and wave handkerchief mm -mm, solve problems solve real life problems if you can wave it like that then speak over the person's financial crisis bring it to an end that's authority that's a sign that there is a government that backs you so someone comes and tells you 11 years we've been buried you say it doesn't matter they say why because triplets are coming are you getting the point Oh, you can be that confident. That's how to become a blessing to people. And so they say, please, how can we locate mama? Because they know that their own is just to find where you are. When they find you, even if you are passing. When prophet Samuel met Saul, he said, come inside and I will show you everything in your heart. That's a dispenser of a reality. When people are sick and they see you, do they get excited or do they just thank you for visiting and grieving with them? Are we together? Listen, we must rise from the realm of counseling to miracles, to results. Don't just counsel people. It's all right. We live in a generation where who doesn't know times are hard. To a point where when people see you, they said, you prayed for me, Jimmy. I don't know what you said. But from Monday till Sunday, I was receiving testimonies of financial breakthrough. As it was happening to me, it was happening to my mother. Please, I've come again. Men are implicated because of the atmosphere you carry. Please hear me. I'm not motivating you. 
These are realities that God wants you to walk in. This is how you become the light of the world. It's not just by talking and saying I'm a Christian. You know why our, our worth in Christ is very small as far as people interpret it? Because we pray so much, but our result is very little. Hallelujah. That's why we share testimonies. These testimonies are a revelation of what the glory of God has done in the lives of people. There are certain possibilities that is granted us access to and they have produced results in the lives of people. So you see incurable diseases going by another possibility. Say after me, all things are possible. Say it, all things are possible. But not for everyone. Yes, you must agree with this. All things are not possible for everyone. Your possibility is a measure of the glory of God that can find expression in you. Are we together? That is why encounter is so important. Because encounter is the spiritual activity that truly builds faith in you. Listen, faith comes by hearing. Do you hear what you read? Answer me please. Do you hear what you read? When I read the Bible, do I hear anything? That means beyond this reading, there is a reality that should find expression in my spirit. Mama, come and collect phone. Did you hear me? So it's not that you were rebellious. If I'm talking and you didn't hear me, will you just stand up and come? So many people say, I don't know if I had God or not. You didn't hear. Are we together? Because his voice is louder than the voice of every devil. And you can come and collect it. Mama, and give me this phone. You had it. This happens in the place of encounter. You don't roam around this noisy valley of this world and expect to hear God with clarity. Your landlord is making noise. Your village is making noise. Wickedness making noise. Carnality is making noise. You won't hear him that way, brothers and sisters. Are we together? I really am challenging us. Another thing that I think is responsible for people not paying attention to God is we have this idea that paying attention to God is a waste of time in terms of achieving our destiny. I don't know who deceived us with that understanding. That, please come. Two of us start out on a spiritual journey. Look at me, everyone. Two of us start out on a spiritual journey. Are we together? And then this guy keeps moving. Just move slowly. Right? And then I feel I am behind. Because that guy wants to start a church. He wants to marry. He wants to move forward. He wants to do this. And you are here with God. We call this delay. We call this waste of time. And sometimes we say, God, honestly, this you are always talking to me. I don't want you to waste my time. Let me tell you the thing with God. When he's done with you, you will not walk. That's the thing. No. The Bible says immediately Jesus entered the boat. They were at the other side. No process. Immediately. As soon as he entered the boat, they appeared there. That's the God of all flesh. So there are people who started their journey. They didn't wait to find out from God what are the rules of the engagement. They just got up. I must make it. My share in this life. What is my own is my own. And all these foolish things we keep talking. And... They have marked time somewhere in life with six children now. Whereas somebody who they were looking at as wasting time now is walking on the wings of the spirit. Moving as if Satan does not exist because he stayed to master the art of war before he started moving. It pays to stay with God. The fastest way to make impact is to stay with God. Not to look for endorsement. Not to print invitation cards and say, Jimmy, invite me. I'm a very intelligent entrepreneur. Invite me. Koinonia, give me the mic. Let me lead praise and worship once. And even you, you will know that Kai, God has children. No. We will never give you mic in Jesus' name. Because it means you are deficient in training. Listen, never be ashamed if others go and leave you. You are actually running. You don't know. Elijah told Ahab, saddle your ass and go. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And then instead of him to run too, 
he waited and the bible says the hand of the lord came upon him he guarded his loins and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jezreel do you want to stay with god and let him file you and you get up and move in power or do you want to join this rat race people are doing in life they take two steps and mark time there so there is a pile of people who started their journey but cannot move because they do not understand the art of the war. I make up my mind to wait. I make up my mind to wait. Are we together? So that by the time I start moving, I will move at a speed and at a pace that will grant me capacity to do much for the kingdom. Moses! Was about to move, but he said, Lord, do not send me. I know that the people need to get to the promised land, but I'm also aware that there are all kinds of obstacles. Lord, don't send me. I have questions to ask you. I like Moses. Moses asked God questions. The same thing Gideon did. Gideon said, you are sending me to go and defeat the Midianites. Oh Lord, you are king, but I'm a man. Let me ask you intelligent questions. Prove to me, oh. Look, stay in the secret place and ask God every question. What happens when my finances dry up as a man of God? God, give me the secret now. Not when it happens there. What happens when somebody is about to crash under the hands of the enemy and I cannot see it? And he shows you the mystery. When you take them like keys, you can tell the gate of destiny be opened. And the moment you start moving, you move like a general in the kingdom. When others stand, there is a strategy that you can find expression. We will wait upon the Lord. For in His presence, there's fullness of joy. And our strength shall be restored. As we wait upon the lord hallelujah listen i'll share with you just one key tonight the key i want to share with you i'll share with you many other keys when you want to grow spiritually and become a reflector the first key is death john 12 john 12 let's read 23 and 24 John 12. God is raising mighty and powerful people in this place. John 12. Now watch this. There is a relationship between death and glory. Please look at me. Never forget what I told you. There is a relationship in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of power. In the realm of impact. In the realm where men do business with God. There is a relationship between death and glory. Years ago a lady met me and shared with me a dream. And that dream was going to launch her into a season of dealings with God. And I knew it was not going to be an easy time for her. But I spoke with her, I told her grace for you. And the next two years or so of that lady's life would be times of sin intense pruning and testing and maturing but after that time god brought a vessel that was worthy of honor the bible says jesus not an angel answered them saying the hour is come that the son of man should be what so we're talking about glorification the time has come for you people to know how powerful my father is the time has come for all of you to see the multifaceted dimensions of the might of Yahweh. You've heard about him. Your father's told you. You are about to see it now. Next verse. But for this to happen, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you. This is the mystery that will make me glorify. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and faints and goes through coma and dies he said it abides alone unprofitable 
it says but if he dies it bringeth forth what how do you produce much fruit in the kingdom by your death hmm. let me tell you only dead men carry the glory only dead men carry the glory what that means is you must come to a point where you die to your ambitions you die to your aspirations you die to your formulas you die to the conditions you give god lord i give you two weeks if you don't bless me you are not king of kings uh -uh. two weeks will pass you will not be blessed you will say okay god i give you one month i've extended it for you as if you are you are giving god grace and at the end of it you say lord you know what even if it's in 10 years you don't bless me i love you you have died you have died to those conditions you give god lord i'm sweeping your church you better be looking at me wipe my tears as i'm wiping the tears in your own house too that is true but if that is the reason why you are sweeping the church you are wasting your time are we together death means losing nothing around your life controls your passion for god nothing absolutely nothing not money not lack of it not fame not lack of it not ministry not lack of it you come to a point in your life where he is all in all that's death it doesn't mean physical death but let me tell you it can be painful because the process in the spirit with which a man relinquishes his will is very hard no man gives it to god just like that you can only give god permission to take it for you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone and right now through the good times and bad you are on your throne you are god alone. let me tell you something there are many ways to know a spiritual man. Prayer and tongues and rema are the foundational ways to know a man of God or a man of the spirit. The chiefest way to know a man of the spirit is through his cars. The testament of his sacrifice. The testament of his handing over the management of his life to God. How he trusted God for certain things and they did not happen. And he still said, Lord, you are glorified. That's spirituality. Not preaching. Are we together? You frustrate Satan. You've heard me say this. There is no way I know in terms of its, its highest level of impact to frustrate Satan than to give God glory in the midst of your pain. Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles on what it seems today. And though I haven't lost my faith, I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray. That's somebody's condition in this place listening to me. But I don't know what to say, I don't know where to start. But as you give the grace With all that's in my heart I will sing And I will praise Even in my darkest heart Through the sorrow and the pain I will sing Sing it from your heart I will pray Regardless of what is around me I lift my hands to honor you. Because One more time. Help me. I will sing. I will sing. That's how spiritual men are made. I will pray. They defy circumstances. Their love for God is not tied to anything. Through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing. And I will pray. I, will I may pray. cry, but I will still pray. I lift my hands to honor you Because your word is true I will see Hear me 
you don't become a spiritual man when mike is given to you you become a spiritual man when you can look at someone you trusted god for their healing and they died and you say lord i'm standing in front of this grave and you are still god you challenge satan are we together you expected five points you went to the board and you saw four carryovers and you know you must try an extra session and you say lord i won't pretend i know i prayed but lord i want you to know that you have won my heart i'm too addicted this is too small a reason to come in between me and you and you're, you are promoted in the spirit because that is your death god is saying who is this that is calling on me he said gather unto me my saints psalm 50 verse 5 they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice let me show you how god brought us to where we are it was never a thing of hoping for results there was no other plan b i never had plan b with god if it doesn't go well with him let me just die there i like esther she said if i perish let me tell you many of us have plan b there's one leg in god but you are hooking the other leg in case god disappoints you if you do not bless me let the world laugh at me if koinonia does not grow let us remain a subject of mockery but it will never never ever see change this your anger and annoyance over god lord i trust you i've been serving in your house if i uh, 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 spiritual men never get angry with god there are men who have died when you come to a dead man watch this when you are removing the trouser of a dead man will he get up and say stop huh when you are removing the money in his pocket no that's how to die if god says son i need your phone you hand it over and say where is it all things a man can have nothing except it is given to him all this our greedy lifestyle is a sign that we are alive in ourselves that's why we never see the attention of god listen whether god keeps his anointing in heaven or in you he's comfortable because it's still the same thing to him you are that yielded it's like two stores of a man you know how people do business they can tell you i have a branch in kaduna i have a branch in lagos any one of them will give you the same result can god say i have this grace in heaven but i still have one on the earth go and meet that person you will get the same result as though you were praying to me because he's that aligned death one of the most painful but most powerful keys of carrying the glory you can jack yourself and claim i have the glory you will waste your time until a corn of wheat falls down and dies brothers and sisters hear me i tell you the truth and i lie not there is nothing god makes a demand of in my life that i cannot give him ask him you don't want to know the things god has demanded in my life anything you cannot give God is the reason why you will not host his glory at that level if God tells me give me koinonia I will pack it up like a cloth put it in a nylon bag and hand it over to God immediately not after a meeting immediately if he tells me this is the last time you should be preaching all the ministrations will be cancelled with an apology you know why many of us die we are the ones responsible for everything in our lives so we die he says come unto me all ye that are what weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest everybody say death say it there are many people's training in the body of christ we don't teach people the mystery of death and then they expect glory the bible talks of the sufferings of christ and the glory that should follow are we together yes romans chapter 8 please from verse 18 and 19 for i reckon that the what the constraint that's what we call it. Let me be a sacrifice. 
What's the other part of that song? Just that part. My life to Just sing that part for me. That's the song in my spirit. That's the scripture here. Let this be a sacrifice. Let me dedicate my life to worship. Where you become a living sacrifice. It says, listen, hold on. For I reckon, I come to terms. There is no other way. You can choose your way. The prison is full of people who chose their own methods to life. Are we together? They chose to jump fence. They chose to point guns at people. That was their way. The Bible said there is a way that cement right. There is a way. It may be popular, but it's wrong. Let me tell you, the way of the throne is the cross. You will never get to the throne until you go through the cross. I know this is not an attractive message. Don't allow people to fool you. The cross is the way to the throne. There is something that happens to you at the cross that qualifies you for the throne. The way to the throne is when you face Goliath. He does something to you. Whenever you pray for a throne, Goliath is coming. Until you qualify, you will not sit on that throne. I speak to you a mystery that makes men carriers of power. When you speak, it's as if heaven owes you a debt they must pay not everyone listen the centurion said for i am a man under authority he said i say unto one go i say unto one come death not rema not greek word not logos not kairos not chronos uh -uh. none of those things will replace true fire the secret place where there is a testimony of death galatians 2 20 please he said, for I am crucified with Christ. That's the realm. You have died to your ambitions. You have died to your aspirations. Whether you call me Pastor Josh, Prophet Josh, Apostle Josh, whatever. <clears throat> no longer do you have that appetite to do anything that is outside of God. Your life revolves around His will. His wish is literally your command. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Then he says, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. Then he says, and this life that I live in the flesh that is the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not faith in the Son of God. The very faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Have you gotten to that point where you are dead to yourself? Look, you will not lay hands on the sick and say, be healed. I'm a Christian. Jesus died for me. Be healed. We keep mocking ourselves before demons. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. I see the scars in them. I see them pass through the cross. But he said, who are you? You just jump from nowhere and think because your father is a priest, a priest that looks like a herbalist, do you inherit that? No. Listen, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. Everything is given, but not as gifts. There are some things that are given as rewards. Unto us a son is born, but unto us, unto us a child is born, but unto us a son is given. And the government will rest upon the shoulder of the son. A symbol of authority. Are we together? It says, an heir as long as he's a child, differeth not from a slave, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors. God is challenging us tonight. Right? Anointed to reveal his glory. In the course of the series, I'm going to be teaching you something powerful about the anointing. I tell you, your life will catch fire. It's time for us to step into greater levels. There is so much God wants to do with us. Give him space. Koinonia, give him space. God wants to find expression. Let me tell you something. When you get to a point where you can speak over a man's life and change his destiny, you are really powerful. You are really powerful. Where you can use words to veto the limitations in men's lives. Who is this? That the winds and the waves obey him. He didn't carry cane. Michael, where are you? 
this wind is stubborn he stood and said shalom shalom the centurion said uh -uh. i look at you and you are not representing yourself you are under authority you are a reflector of the glory of the father huh? i am also a man under authority i know how powerful my government is on the strength of that power i can tell one go and he will go when you tell things go and they don't go they are sending a message to you that you must admit if you tell sickness go and it does not go it is speaking back to you where is your authorization like passport you are traveling out you smuggled your way and this custom stop you somewhere are we together you put your clothes in a bag with with clothes and as you are smuggling yourself out they trap you what is the question they are going to ask you they're not going to ask you your name what is your passport your symbol of authorization what gives you access to move from one dimension to the other and if they cross check and find out that you are an illegal person what happens they deport you you are not even there yet but they send you back even if you cross over to another country one day when they catch you there what do they do they be, that's, there are many people being deported in this season because they never went there correctly they used some manipulations and they jumped and experienced power for two weeks that's why you think they are using charm it's not charm they didn't follow the right path so they must be sent back the thing that makes me fear god is that even if you are 20 years the day you decide to walk with him you will go back and start correctly god doesn't do double promotion you pass through every class one by one and write every exam in god's class 90 over 100 is not a everything he teaches is necessary for your future it's not like the way we are you can get here and go in god's class you you will clap for you for the ones you have passed but you will rewrite the exams till you pass there that's why 40 days became 40 years until they passed every course he was teaching them are we together we're going to pray tonight i'll stop here and we're going to pray god has been speaking to me about the things that he wants to do this is our year of multiplied um, grace and influence hallelujah god wants to reveal greater glory you already seen it happening in the testimonies and the rest but you see any true man of god does not want to rise alone are we together we must all rise together where our words become like the words of god the bible says the words of samuel was like the word of god when he spoke none of his word fell to the ground what a man what a man there are some of our family members right now we are the only reflectors of the glory of christ as far as they are concerned are we together we left many of our loved ones and some of them are practically on their way to perishing in every wise sickness finances spiritually but god tonight wants to anoint you and through this series he's going to be guiding you are we together so that he will anoint you i trust god that by miracle service this month some people would have entered some strange dimensions strange spiritual dimensions you can know something has entered your hand all this acting we keep acting do you know i'm anointed no you are not it should be very clear the anointing is like light there is light here if you ever have to ask one person do you know i'm anointed i'm telling you it's not there oh it should be very clear as clear as light is from darkness tonight we are going to pray but before we pray i want you to admit that you have limited the reflection of the glory in your life in many ways there are so many possibilities we should have entered as men of god as individuals are we together so it's very important close your eyes in one minute before we pray i see the presence of god strong already here i want you to just reflect in one minute on what i've said is my life giving god room to manifest his glory how have i brought shame and disappointment to the name of god because i have bragged being a christian 
have stood near sick people and nothing has happened i prayed in my family they have been mocking god they've been mocking koinonia i dared them but i prayed that nothing happened pray lord things must change my christian life has been barren for too long i need an encounter a true encounter i'm tired of faking it i need something solid Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in my life. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in my life. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in my life. more time shalom and then we we'll pray shalom shalom jehovah shalom shalom you're welcome in my life welcome the new dimensions in god glory of God find expression in your life somebody is going to die because of it a day will come you will meet a sick person and there is no Joshua Selman there is no koinonia a day will come you will be desiring certain dimensions of his power a day will come you'll be desiring certain dimensions I'm here to charge you as you begin to pray certain things will begin to shift in your life lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit just pray in tongues kabata shabalarabalaba Shabra kata barados, zebra kete le barapata. Reflectors of the glory, carriers of a reality. Shaba barata barada balada bagada, zebra kete barada balada ba, rekete braba bada bala ba. My life must be a conduit. My life must be a reflection of your possibilities. My life must be a reflection of your wisdom, your power, your wealth, your might, your intelligence. My life 
must be supernatural in every sense. Make sure you're praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I need power in my life. I'm tired of a natural life. I know there is a dimension of power, true spiritual power that can land upon my life and make the difference. Lift your voice and cry. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Cry for power. Scatter lato shake. There are giants on every mountain. It takes power to move mountains. It takes power to move mountains. Spiritual power. Spiritual power. Spiritual power. The unction. The unction from the Almighty that makes you supernatural. The unction. Shabarata kata prega de bala bosh. Cry, Lord, a release of power, like the dew of heaven. I need power in my life. My life is too natural. My words are too natural. My business is too natural. My family is too natural. I cry for the supernatural dimension. Of my success, the supernatural dimension. I invoke the supernatural dimension of the equation of my life. Hallelujah. Was he praying? Listen, listen, guys, listen. The Bible says, Know ye not that your body, not just your spirit, your God has been mocked too many times. There's no power in our lives. No, no. You pray for the sick, nothing happens. You speak, your words are empty. We keep mocking ourselves. God is going to touch somebody here. Now, now, all those things, we, we fool ourselves. Listen, we are going to cry. There is spiritual power, authentic unction from the throne. It can land on a man's life. It can land on a lady's life. And the difference becomes clear. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference lift your voice and cry lord for power lord for power lord for power unction unction grace unction let my prayers command results unction let my words carry power carry change Send it, oh God, like the dew from heaven. Send it, oh God, upon my life. Pray. I'm tired of an ordinary life. I'm tired of an ordinary life. That supernatural dimension. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and then we are done. Be sensitive now. The anointing of the Spirit is going to begin to fall on people. I believe that God is going to be activating things. It's a series. So we are still praying. But I want you to pray. Listen. Listen. We are going to pray. It's one thing to be gifted. But it's another thing for that gift to be anointed. It's one thing to be graced. Even your grace needs to be anointed. Brothers and sisters, we will mock ourselves if we keep on this path. I cannot live a life without power. A powerless life. Everything ordinary. Everything. Your words are ordinary. Everything happens in your life. There is no supply of intelligence beyond the intellect. It's a terrible life. We are going to pray now. Are we together? As you pray, I'm agreeing with you. The angels of God are going to be walking around and doing things in the lives of people. Please, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, the dimension of power that must land upon my life, let it begin to land. Lift your voice and pray. Be sensitive as you pray. Mighty impartations will begin to happen as you pray. Shapatakata. Fire from heaven land upon our life unction from the throne oh receive it it's coming on you like fire like fire like fire pray 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 an unction spiritual power for results power for impact power Lord I'm tired tired of an ordinary Christian life I'm tired of just being a follower of a religion I am tired I need power from heaven in my life he said, ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power and unction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. When the power of the Holy Ghost is not upon your life, your Christian life will be frustrating. You will hardly get results. It will be a life of struggle. Struggle over everything. You will knock on doors for ages before it opens. But there is an unction. God never designed that we live ordinarily. He said there is this treasure. You are in every way spiritual. The last prayer point, and then I'll pray for us. Listen. Listen. You are going to pray and say, Lord, from my head to my toe, may it be saturated with the power of the living God. Let me be a literal walking bank of power. Come on, Koinonia, are you praying? Lift your voice and pray. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, power power in the morning power 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 kapara takata in my sleep power on my bed the power of the holy ghost as i speak a release of power pray lord i need power in my business I need power in my academics I need power power to conquer power to break forth power to buy power to lose power to set the pace power 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 power
power to subdue darkness power to subdue witches and wizards power to subdue wicked men power to prevail over wicked systems fill me up till I overflow I want to run I want to run. Fill me up. It's a prayer in your life. Till I overflow. Fill me up. your hands. I want to pray for you. All through this series, I'll be ending with prayers. Honestly, I want something to land on your life. Something that separates you. Something that sets you apart. There is an unction a man can carry. There is an unction we all need. Whether you are inside, outside, those online, participate. There's no distance in the spirit. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. And I want you to receive it with your heart. Honestly, I want something to come on your life. All through this week, after every teaching session, I want to jack your spirit back. dispensers of authentic power that you have an unction that cannot be denied lift your hands in the name that is above all names I pray everyone inside here and in any of the overflows and all those following us as I stretch my hands right now in the next one to two minutes there will be such an impartation father all kinds of graces Choose it by yourself. But right now, I stand under this anointing. Receive that impartation everywhere. 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 Let God locate men. Unction. Unction. Release of spiritual power upon your ministry. Power upon your academics. Power upon your spiritual life. Power upon your prayer life. Shaka ta ta ta. Is coming on people inside and outside. Power upon your words. Power upon your business. Power upon your marriage. Power upon your body. Power upon every challenge in your life. I pray for you where things happen in your life at a natural frequency let there be a transportation right now as I speak be carried in the wings of the spirit right now right now let the spirit of God take men take men be carried right now be carried by the wings of the Holy Ghost be carried by the wings of the Holy Ghost to a realm where you fly when others are walking be carried to a realm of encounters, a realm of visions. I open your eyes. I open your eyes. Visions, 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 visions. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. Lift your hands. I pray for you. Something will happen to many of us right now. The hunger that
that makes a man pursue the presence of God. Some of you, your hunger has gone down. You're about to receive a restoration. Right now, wherever you are, hunger, 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 hunger for spiritual things. Prayer hunger, fire hunger. Oh, let it come from the throne. Hunger, hunger that drives you to pray. Hunger. Every distraction in your life, I cast it away. Whether relationship, whether marriage, whether money, everything that distracts you from having a genuine hunger for God. I cast it from your life. Return back to the place of hunger. Take me to the place. The place you are. To. The secret place. That's where I want to be. Take me to the place. The place you are, the secret place, that's where I want to be. I want to pray for your hands. Please lift them up. Something will happen to your hands that will change your life. Moses used his rod and threw it and he used his hands to pick the rod. These hands are supposed to be hands of signs and wonders but for many of us there is nothing happening no results just lift your hands i stretch my hands i make contact with every hand prophetically let there be transference of graces right now in the name of jesus your hand from today becomes supernatural becomes supernatural becomes supernatural I make contact with your hands in the name of Jesus. I make contact with your hands. Receive grace. Receive power. Receive grace. Receive power upon your hands. Receive grace. Lay it on the sick and watch them rise. Use it for your academics and watch excellence. In the name of Jesus, let the healing virtue flow to your hands. Let the healing anointing flow to your hands i release it from my spirit let the healing anointing flow right now i release it from my hands to your hands right now right now right now it's like rain it will come upon you it's time to heal the sick it's time for the healing ministry to come strong again i activate it that healing fire i activate it that deliverance fire deliverance grace the unction to heal the sick, the unction. Father, I pray for your people. Anyone here who came sick, let me just minister one minute. Just lay your hands where you're having the pain. I want to rebuke that sickness. I command that spirit of infirmity holding God's people. Mm. Some of you will start feeling a burning sensation go through your body. That's the healing power of Jesus. Right now I release that anointing. I command every spirit that holds your body captive to leave you right now and i declare every sickness be gone right now let there be creative miracles every missing body part we put a new one right now we change genotypes by the power of the holy spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ every pain every headache every migraine whatever it is every blood disease you go back this week and check you will find out that it's gone like it will be like magic is gone and gone forever in the name of Jesus next week I'll be teaching you the highest dimension
of reflecting the glory of God is to reflect his resurrection. When things that are dead come alive because of your presence, you are walking at the apex of the revelation of the power of God. Every spirit that has tied the destiny of anyone in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I not only command that they let you go, I command judgment upon them. I'm praying this prayer for only two people. That's why the Lord asked me to pray. And those spirits must leave those two people now. You cannot come to a place like this and go back the same. No. Mike said it because God is here. I don't care what followed you. Please believe me. There is creative power. I pray for you. As you are going back, leave those challenges here. I want you to believe what I'm telling you. As you are walking out of this place, I said drop those challenges here. I forbid them from following you to your respective places. The only thing that goes back with you is the presence of God and testimonies and supernatural power keep standing there are men and women here right now who need to give their hearts to the lord you've heard me pray while you were lifting your hands the lord began to speak to you about your salvation two sets of people i'll call them quickly those who have never given their lives to christ i believe there are so many outside watching by the screen and then number two there are those who you want to make your ways right with god the truth is you love the Lord but somehow you've deviated from the paths of God and you're saying Lord I'm returning back home in two minutes all those people those giving their lives to Christ for the first time those rededicating themselves wherever you are don't wait for anybody to come before you start coming make your way to the front quickly I want to pray for you I want to agree with you that this becomes the end of every challenge clear the way for them don't be ashamed motivate them they are coming God bless you God bless you. Koinonia, clap for them. Please clear the way for those outside. There are still people inside. Make your way to the front. Come to Jesus. You have seen his power. He reveals his glory that men might believe him. He reveals his glory that men might be believe in him. There are still people to come. Appreciate them. They are still coming. Don't sit back at your seat. Allow the Lord. Give him chance to build your life from tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Put the devil to shame in your life today. Put the devil to shame in your life. God bless you. They are coming. The Holy Ghost is convicting them. Make your way to the front. Hallelujah. If there are still people coming, make your way to the front. It's not too late. Thank you so much. Those of us in front, lift your right hand and say this after me sincerely and passionately. I believe there are still people the Holy Ghost is speaking to to run and join them. If you are part of those people, God is speaking to you right now and saying you had the man of God. Make your way. Please come out. I believe there are people outside, at least three or four people I'm seeing. The Lord is speaking to and say you need to come and join them. Quickly come and join us. Don't be afraid. The Lord is speaking to you. You know it. Don't argue with the spirit. Make your way to the front. All those in front here, I'd like you to pray. Lift your right hand and say this truly from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. You are not reciting a poem. This is a miracle happening to you. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Join them, my dear. I believe that you died for me. You shed your blood for me. There's somebody coughing out something. I'm seeing a vision. Someone is coughing out something. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing. I'm seeing someone coughing out something. That devil must leave in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing somebody coughing out something. I command that spirit. Sorry, I have to interrupt your prayer, but I'm seeing it in the spirit. Whoever that person is, whatever demonic thing was put in your system must leave. It must leave this night. Say after me, those of you in front, Lord, I believe in you. And I surrender my heart totally to you. From today, I hand over the management of my life to you be my savior be my lord i receive eternal life into my spirit in the name of jesus let me pray for you i stretch my hands towards you and i pray 
that the spirit of the living God will find great expression in your life. May he turn you to awesome wonders in the name of Jesus. Never will you be limited in your life again. I plant in you a hunger for the presence of God. A hunger for spiritual things. And may every area of your life begin to reflect the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you for this great decision. I want you to follow. Where are the people? Who is waving? Okay. There's a lady waving her hands there. And I'd like you to please follow her. They'll have your details. And immediately you'll return back to your seat. God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia.